The city's tourism agreement with Red Bicycle, Bicycle Communications was under the microscope at City Hall this week as Council received an update on the work of Discover Lloydminster. Red Bicycle owns and operates the Discover Lloydminster Tourism Branch. The city entered into a three-year agreement with Red Bicycle at a cost of $30,000 a year in 2019. City administration believes the partnership is a cost-effective way to market the city. It's a win-win for the community, it's a win for the city and a win for the taxpayers because we're not duplicating services and that's something that we've worked hard at as council and administration not to do. Discover Lloydminster puts out an annual travel guide, website and runs a Facebook and Instagram account that provides information for travellers to Lloydminster. Close to 6,000 people have visited the Discover Lloydminster website this year. Edmonton, Saskatoon and London, England are among the top 10 cities who've accessed the site. The city says this partnership sh saves them $190,000. Time employee, as well as the printing costs and some of those costs that are incurred, as well as the, all the other additional support to that one employee, because one employee doesn't do all that work. So you've got marketing people, you've got people out selling advertising, you've got design and graphics. Council will make a decision on renewing the agreement at a future meeting. A local legal clinic is offering free consultations to the public. Our Tate Laycraft got the chance to learn more. Today on Primetime Local News, I'm talking with Kathy Parsons from the Central Legal Clinic. So, Kathy, for a lot of people, the idea of seeking legal advice can be a little bit of a turnoff, largely because of the high costs that tend to be associated with it. But from what I understand, the clinic is offering some free legal advice here in town. That is correct, yes. We provide uh, summary legal advice uh, for people in pretty much all areas of law. Um, and they will be matched with a lawyer who volunteers with our organization and who practices that area of law in their you know, day job. And in this day and age where people can go online and do their own research, why is a service like this so useful or important? Um, well, the, the resources you're going to find online are, you know, generally applicable um, and not specific to a person's particular um, legal situation. So, and some resources online are also not reliable sources of legal information or don't pertain to the jurisdiction of Alberta or, um, you know, whatever. So it's really important that you make sure that you're getting reliable legal information that is applicable to the jurisdiction um, that you live in, as well as um, to the very um, nuances of the situation um, that will provide um, information to that lawyer to know exactly what your next steps are going to be and um, how you should view your legal um, recourse, depending on, you know, what area of law it is. And what kind of aid is the clinic able to provide within these sessions then? Is there anything that's off limits? Um, not really at all. Some of, uh, of that depends on what the lawyer is able to do in that moment. Sometimes lawyers will fill out paperwork for you, um, you know, say a statement, a, an easy statement of claim for a civil matter or something like that. Most times, though, it's about 30 to 45 minutes um, of information gathering with the lawyer so that they know um, the things that actually pertain to your matter. Um, they'll let you know what law might um, be the thing that you need to pay attention to, different legislations or, you know, that kind of thing that might apply, and then um, give you your next steps in order to move forward if that's what is in your best interest. Sometimes people have a legal situation, but they don't have legal merit because they don't have evidence or, you know, something along to help them move the thing along. And um, that's what the lawyers will help them to determine and what other things they might need to be able to gather in order to take the next step. For people who might be looking for some legal insight, then what's the best way for them to get in contact with the clinic? Um, you can, we have our contact information through our Facebook page. You can message us, you can call us, you can send us an email. There's all those different things that um, will get you, you know, that initial contact then we can do a bit of an intake with people to understand um, exactly what the situation is and give a bit of heads up to the volunteer lawyer so they know um, uh, what's coming at them. 
and then um, we'll make sure that we set you up with an appointment at a, spe a specific time to speak with a lawyer. Thanks so much for doing this, Kathy. No problem. Thank you very much. November is National Pepper Month. Stacey Comer spoke to the founder of a hot sauce company where peppers are their livelihood. I am so happy to be joined today. We're going to be talking about something a little warmer than the weather uh, in the places that we are. And this gentleman is, Tafik Shaw is with us. Uh, he is the owner and president of Lola's Fine Hot Sauce, joining us from Iowa. Uh, how are things there this morning, Tafik? Uh, very cold. I think, I think we've established that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, and the perfect thing for this time of year, if you want to warm up, would be some of Lola's Fine Hot Sauce. So tell me about it. I can see all the bottles sitting behind you. Tell me the story of Lola's Fine Hot Sauce. Yeah, you betcha. So, so we're located right here in Des Moines, Iowa, right here in the USA. So right in the middle. So story of Lola's Fine Hot Sauce. It's actually my mom's recipe. So my mom, she's an immigrant doctor from the Philippines. They came to Iowa of all places to take care of local farmers during a time where there just wasn't any good health care. And growing up, one of my mom's main missions was always to make sure that we had a warm, hot meal at the dinner table, me and my sisters. And it was always was served with a bottle of hot sauce, although it quite didn't look like this back in the day. It was a <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the same recipe that we make today. So we are, everything's all natural. It's vegan, gluten-free, non-GMO, project verified, but full of rich flavor and delicious. So what does the heat range from? Do we have some that are like scary, scary hot and then some really mild? Do you have a little bit of everything? Yeah, you bet. So we've got a little bit of everything and you don't mind, I'm going to grab something here real quick. For sure. So right here, we actually got our six pack variety gift set and I'll go through everything that we have right now. So we've got all kinds of different flavors as you can see here. So we've got everything from our original to our ghost pepper to our Trinidad Scorpion, Carolina Reaper and our family reserve. And some of these are the world's hottest peppers but we use just a little bit for great flavor. So nothing's meant to burn your face off. Now, does this come or is there a source somewhere to feed where people can get uh, recipes to use and, and make with the hot sauce? Yeah, you bet. So, I mean, I love to put it on everything. I mean, I, I'll put it on pizza, I'll put it on poutine, I'll put it on chili, I'll put it in whatever it is. You name it, I'm going to put hot sauce on it. But where you can get it, you can absolutely get it in retailers across Toronto. So, we're in Longo's and a couple of others. We're really just breaking into the market. So, we're really excited for this opportunity to share it. But you can also get it online um, at lolasfinehotsauce.com or lolasfinehotsauce.ca, as well as we are now in national distribution through a lot of Canada's premier distributors. So, we're just getting ready to gear up and enter into a lot of retail there. Well, and one of the reasons that we're speaking to you today is because, believe it or not, it's National Pepper Month, and peppers are your livelihood for this, this sauce to feed. So are you guys doing anything special for National Pepper Month, or is it just a run of the mill as usual? Yeah, so you know, we do something special every month. And it's fun. It's funny that you say that because National Pepper Month is our favorite month here at the office. So we actually have our own garden. I wish I could show you this, but it's like inside of our office. We have Carolina Reapers, Ghost Peppers, Trinidad Scorpion Peppers grown. We all just like to get food in, dice them up and eat them and have a good time and light each other's faces on fire in a good way. Um, <laughs> our staff, they're all heat junkies. They're amazing. We just do tons of fun stuff. We've got great promotions coming up for Thanksgiving, Black Fridays across uh, coming up here. So big shopping holiday a lot of great opportunities to get Lola's on deal um, and get our products out there. So a lot of great stuff going on for National Pepper Month, and we're really highlighting those signature flavors. Now, are you guys always developing? Are you making, looking for new flavors and, and different things you can do? Or do you just stick with the basics and then, uh, you know, just really promote what you have? You know, that's an awesome question. So in Canada right now, we've got our core fours, what do we call it? My mom's signature originals, which is the original, the ghost pepper, the Trinidad scorpion, and Carolina Reaper. Again, world's hottest peppers, but not meant to burn your face off. We use it in a way where it's great flavor. But on top of that, we've got so many other different flavors. We even have salsas too. We've got mild salsa, smoked bacon and sweet corn salsa, mango salsa, and we have some new items that we're launching very soon too. So we do specialize in our core, but we're specialized in all things spicy too. Well, this all sounds like it's going to taste delicious no matter how you use it or what you use it on. So if people are looking to reach out to you and, and uh, see, if, you know, find out some recipes and, and to order, do you have a presence on social media that they can find you somewhere? Absolutely. They can find us at Lola's Fine Hot Sauce on Facebook, at Lola's Fine Hot Sauce on Instagram, as well as Lola's Fine Hot Sauce on Twitter, TikTok. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Pretty much all the platforms were available. Also, you can find us at lolasfinehotsauce.com. Awesome. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with you today, and we are looking forward to see some of the things that you guys will develop and direct everybody to your social media to check it out. And we wish you the best for National Pepper Month. Hopefully you guys come out with some really great new sauces and, and products that we can continue to chat with you about in the future. Awesome. We're excited. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Now Shelby Clark will take a first look at your Friday forecast. Thanks so much, Jasmine. Happy Friday, everybody. We're finally there to the weekend here in the Border City for our Friday forecast. We are sitting at minus two, so we are starting off a lot warmer for our weekend than what we've been seeing throughout the week. We have been seeing a lot more sun throughout the day, so that did help melt some of that snow and help out, but we will be catching some more flurries on the weekend on Saturday here. But switching over to temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan, most are seeing that minus two point here while Lacrobish is at minus one. St. Paul is at minus four, while Vagreville and Wainwright are at minus three, and the rest, Provost and Edmonton are hitting that zero mark. And switching over to our Saskatchewan side here, Isla Cross is at minus four, while it's minus three for Green Lake and Pearsland, as well as in St. Wahlberg. Minus four as well for Maidstone and North Battleford, while uh, Meadow Lake is sitting at that minus five point. And down in Macklin, they are at minus one. But for North Battleford overnight tonight, they will be going down to a low of minus 12, so they are cooling down quite a bit. They will be seeing a, a bit of cloud coverage throughout the night. And tomorrow, they will warm up for Saturday as well at minus two, but they will be having a higher chance of some flurries as well. And switching over to Cold Lake here. Oh, sorry. Some technical difficulties switching over to cold lake soon but for north battleford they will be cooling down quite a bit uh, throughout the evening and they will be seeing a couple clouds in sight but most spots here they will be seeing a warmer day for their saturday just in time for weather and switching over sorry we're still having some technical difficulties here if the thing will work but we will be throwing a break just in case we might not be able to finish off our forecast here and i'll have a bit more after the break Welcome back. A new food label is coming to store shelves soon. It's a label recognizing Western Canadian farmers who provide a safe habitat for ducks in the win their winter wheat field. Jillian Code has the details. Today I'm joined by Daniel Ramage, who is the Director of Market Access and Trade Policy with Cereals Canada. Daniel, what can you tell me about the Habitat Friendly Winter Wheat Program? Yeah, so I, I'm really excited to be uh, to be talking about this new program that we're launching, Cereals Canada, together with our partners. We're launching the Habitat Friendly Winter Wheat Eco Label. Uh, this is all about demonstrating the environmental benefits, uh, specifically the benefits for wildlife habitat on the prairies uh, that are associated with winter wheat production. So there's a really good news story. And this is a program that Cereals Canada developed in partnership with prairie winter wheat farmers, uh, with food manufacturers, and with Ducks Unlimited. So, you know, the program, it's really all about creating a solution uh, that helps people when they're out at the grocery store identify some products that are made using uh, wheat that's grown in a habitat friendly way. So is this something where the farmer would have to register their operation to get certified? So this is a program where the, uh, the claims and the, and the certification process uh, is really all done by the food manufacturers and the grain handlers. So on the farmer's side of things, uh, it's really simple. It's really streamlined because we're leveraging Canada's grain classification system. There's already a system that's in place. Uh, it's, it's put in place by the government of Canada that classifies different types of wheats. And for a farmer to participate in this program, all they have to do is grow Western Canadian winter wheat under that uh, existing classification system. So it couldn't be easier on the farmer's side of things. Uh, and then on the company side of things, uh, they need to keep track of how much winter wheat is entering their system and making it into the final product so that we can be confident when we go to consumers uh, that, uh, that the claims that we're making are, are credible and verifiable. So that's really how this program works. And, and are you finding that these are practices that the farmers are already embodying? Yeah, this is a program that's building on existing benefits that are already happening on Canadian farms. That's what's, I think, so special about this program is that we're just putting a spotlight on benefits and, and great things that are already happening in Canadian agriculture. And we're letting consumers who are interested in, in learning those benefits uh, and maybe shopping uh, in, in, in ways that will support those benefits 
find out about it. So that's what the eco label does. It, it's a solution that helps consumers understand uh, what products are made using habitat friendly winter wheat and it helps them understand the story of how farmers who are growing this wheat are providing important uh, benefits to Canadian wildlife. Yeah, I think that's really wonderful because, you know, in the conversations about consumerism and sustainability, I know a lot of farmers really feel that they're left out of that conversation. And, and as you said, it's it's practices that they're already doing. So it's just, you know, getting that recognition for it is really nice. Um, that was all the questions that I had. Are there any other aspects of this you'd like to touch on? Yeah, well, I, I could mention that we are launching this program. We're just getting it off the ground, but we already have some important partners who are a part of this beyond uh, beyond the group that was involved in launching it, we have some uh, processing companies. And so there's two of them right now. The first is Moudin de Soulange. They're a mill based just outside of Montreal. So they're one of the first mills to be participating in this. And they're supplying uh, flour to artisanal bakeries all across North America. And then the second company, it's Beam Suntory. And uh, they operate a distillery in Calgary where they produce a product called Northern Keep Vodka. Uh, and that's the second product that's gonna be using this, uh, this habitat friendly wheat, winter wheat eco label uh, on their Northern Keep Vodka. So you can keep, out, keep an eye out for those products uh, if you're interested in finding it. But the door is open and, uh, and we're in conversations with, uh, with other businesses that are looking to move forward with this as well. And lastly, is there an approximate date where consumers might see this label on store shelves? It's, uh, it's something that, that we're going to be rolling out over the next few months. And I know that uh, uh, the companies that I mentioned earlier, Moulin de Soulange and Beam Suntory, they're in the process of, uh, of putting it on packaging uh, right away. And so that's something you'll be able to find uh, in the near future. Daniel, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Now we'll take a look at your agriculture prices for today. Indoor sports in the ACAC are back for the first time since the winter of 2020. That season, the Lakeland College women's basketball team won ACAC gold, but had their season cancelled during nationals. This year, they're looking to finish what they started. Our Evan Kenny has the story. Coming into the 2021-22 ACAC season, the Lakeland College women's basketball team has one thing in mind. Win. You know, when you look at this banner up there, it feels like there's something that didn't get finished, right? Uh, going into Nationals, we were playing really, really good basketball. So now, two years later, we only have half that team back. This is a totally different group. But the girls that have returned, I think they're hungry to get back there and prove that they earned that. Ahead of the season, when asked about team expectations, King put it as simple as that. We have four of our five starters from that championship team. So their expectation, the last memory they have is of winning. And, and that's kind of what they're about. I think us veterans in particular, we are gold medalists and we have that expectation to be gold medalists again. And we don't have any, the bar's not set anything lower than that. Lower than that. Last weekend was the team's first league game since winning the 2020 ACAC championship. We obviously think that we're one of, if not the best team in Canada, so the expectations are always set high off the floor, on the floor. There's definitely a bullseye on our back uh, with us being the champs, but even more so because our veteran group is so talented. So when you look at Tori and Bill Gay and Jade and Haley and even Alana when she's healthy, compare them to a 17-year-old kid, it's a really tough matchup. The Rustlers are 2-0 on the season and will be hosting two games against Keanu College this weekend. Probably the huge advantage we have is we have four players that could go off for 20 points at any given time, and they're very unselfish, so they don't care who's scoring. They just care about the score clock at the end of the night. Tip-off tonight is at 8, and tomorrow afternoon at 3. Evan Kenny, Primetime Local Sports.
so much, Jasmine. Sorry to everybody about those technical difficulties earlier, but we will be moving on here. We'll even have some more photos at the end of this segment. But starting off, we'll take a look at temperatures across the central region of Alberta and Saskatchewan. On the Alberta side, most are sitting at that minus two mark right now, while Jasper is a bit cooler at minus three, uh, plus one in Rocky Mountain House. So they haven't even uh, reached the minus uh, marks here yet today. But Red Deer and Edmonton are sitting at that zero mark. And switching over to the Saskatchewan side here, they are seeing slightly cooler temperatures in most spots here. Minus three for Saskatoon and Prince Albert. Uh, Meadow Lake is sitting at minus five and it is now minus six and Melfort. And switching over to our northern region of the provinces, they are seeing around the same as what we are seeing in the central region here. Minus seven in Uranium City and Stony Rapids. Most spots are sitting at minus three. Minus four in La Ronge, while it's minus six degrees in Flon and South End. Switching over to this end here, they are seeing slightly warmer ones, especially down in this area here with Grand Perry is at plus one. Slave Lake is hitting that zero mark as well. Peace River is a little bit cooler, sitting at minus seven, while Fort McMurray is at minus four. Fort Chip One is at, almost at minus 10 there, while High Level has actually reached past minus 10 and is sitting at minus 12 right now. And now switching over back, uh, switching over to our southern region, sorry, of our provinces, they are seeing some warmer temperatures as usual. Uh, they are heading more into the minus marks as we are heading more into the winter season though. But Lethbridge and Medicine Hat are sitting at plus two, while Calgary is at plus four. Coronation is seeing minus one and Banff is at minus two. And switching over to this side here, they are seeing slightly cooler temperatures as well for the Saskatchewan side. Moose Jaw is hitting that zero mark while Estevan is at minus one. It is minus two in Swift Current and Kindersley while Regina is at minus three and Yorkton is the coolest at minus seven. But going back across the region, the temperatures tomorrow, as you can see on the map here, we are warming up uh, just slightly for our Saturday here in most spots across the region. We will be seeing flurries in a lot of spots as well, especially here in the border city. We do will be seeing around a 30 to 60 percent chance of some uh, flurries tomorrow. But over on the Alberta side, they are seeing a lot more plus sevens on the board, while Lacobish is a bit cooler at minus eight. And over on the Saskatchewan side, they are seeing around the same as what we are seeing on the Alberta side, except Isla Cross is going to be the coolest sitting at minus 10 and down in Provost, Macklin and Wainwright, they'll be the warmest sitting at minus one tomorrow. Now taking a look at some photo submissions here. Oh, sorry, after the seven day forecast, Saturday and Sunday we'll be seeing minus two on Saturday with a mix of some sun and cloud. Sunday we'll be seeing minus seven with a lot more cloud coverage and starting off next week, we will be warming up just a bit to minus one on Monday. Tuesday we'll see a lot more cloud coverage as well and throughout the rest of next week on Wednesday, we'll be seeing the coolest to minus 15 there and minus eight on Thursday. Thursday with a low of minus 22 so it's going to be pretty chilly on Thursday and Friday we'll be seeing minus one and now we'll be seeing some photo submissions sorry about that earlier on thank you to everyone who submitted some more photos of their winter uh, blizzard that we got earlier on in the week look at the vehicle over on the left there they got absolutely covered hopefully everybody is driving safe throughout the week there isn't as many accidents and uh, we'll, we'll be prepared for the next snowfall and I can't believe how high some of the snow got for our first snowfall but hopefully it won't be too bad next time and the next photo I got earlier on. What a beautiful sunset picture. I love seeing sunset photos as I said before. Thank you to everyone once again for being able to submit their weather photos online to our Facebook page. And that's all I got for now. We'll have more news coming up after the break. Joining us today for this week's entertainment panel is Abby St. John. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Of course. So first off, of course, we have to speak about this. You know, we're huge Marvel fans here, and I think everybody is speaking about this right now, of course, with the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer, you know, the official trailer that kind of just released and it kind of expanded off of the first teaser trailer. And now, you know, it sparked up many conversations, as you can see online, especially with theories. And of course, at the end of the trailer with MJ looking like she might be dying, hopefully not. But it's going to be fascinating to see just all these theories and what's going to come true. Yeah, they've definitely expanded on um, what we can expect uh, compared to the teaser trailer. It kind of also seems like it left off where the first trailer started because it starts, Dr. Strange, like that spell that you botched w making everyone forget you, it, it broke the multiverse and it's released all of these villains from their universe coming into theirs. So that's something huge that we've already known and what we can expect the past uh, villains from the other super uh, Spider-Man movies are returning. We got Doc Ock, 
Sandman, Green Goblin, Electro, Lizard, you get a better look at those characters in the trailer. So that's very exciting. You know, I was very excited to see Electro, Jamie Foxx's Electro for the first time, and it looks so cool. And of course, you know, Green Goblin and Doc Ock has always been one of my favorite villains. So it's very exciting to see these uh, returning villains and, you know, the original actors who uh, played them originally. So I'm very excited to see more of them. Uh, and you, we learned that he's basically going to be fighting ghosts because each villain has already died in their own universes. So they're coming back and, you know, it also shows that he's struggling with not being able to save everyone. That's the big thing with him. He wants to save everyone, but he's slowly realizing that he can't. So this Spider-Man uh, movie de definitely seems darker than the other ones. Tom Holland has even said in an interview that uh, this is going to be a darker um, movie and of course like you've mentioned we see at the end of the trailer you know that classic MJ fall from all all the other movies have it so now this one has it and we're left wondering what's gonna happen uh, as you know he's reaching down to grab her there's a new Spider-Man suit. It's black, and it also seems like he he's able to use Doctor Strange's powers. You know, he kind of shows that with the suit. So that's going to be also very exciting because he's unlocking different abilities um, that he didn't have previous. You know, he had his has his suits that he's made. You know, through Tony Stark, and now he's making his own. And now he's adding Doctor Strange's powers. So he's just expanding on what he can do, and it's very exciting. And I bet this is going to be the best Spider. -Man man movie so far and uh i'm very excited for it as well you know we only have a few more weeks december 17th is when it comes out exclusively in theaters so i'm very excited to see what uh see the full film yeah i agree completely it's going to be great and especially for older audiences that are used to more of toby Maguire's. you know first off in the 2000s and everything they're going to be really excited to see all those villains come back because it's been like quite like many years since we've seen them and you know me and you have been doing a whole movie rewatch and just watching that first green goblin movie with the toby Maguire spider-man it was really it was just really cool to be able to see it kind of do a throwback there but you know another nostalgic uh, thing that's coming here for harry potter fans out there now next topic we're going to be speaking about the 20th anniversary that they're going to have the cast reuniting for a look back at all the harry potter movies and this is going to be really cool because you know they're saying that the cast haven't even seen each other since that last movie i think in 2011 and uh they're uh saying that author jk rowling won't even be there but fans are going to be excited to see them uh you know reunite and just be able to see them come back together after so many years as well Yes, Harry Potter has been a huge deal for so many years. It's still relevant to this day. You know, there's seven books, eight films, and that's over the course of 20 plus years. Um, all in total, eight films, they've made around $7.7 .7 billion. Um, so that's huge. You know, there's many theme parks. You have Harry Potter World in Orlando. You have Harry Potter World out in England. You have all these attractions and theme park, and people still talk about Harry Potter. It's still a huge deal. I know Harry Potter is a big deal in my family um i know you and i just recently watched all all eight films and you hadn't really seen a lot of it so it's it's super exciting harry potter is still relevant to this day and i think it's going to continue and so having a 20th anniversary special where the pretty much the whole cast is returning you got the main cast and then you have all the uh uh side characters they're all coming back so that's ex super exciting to see you know get their perspective on you know the the years that it's been since the last movie came out and talking about since they started you know Daniel Radcliffe um, Emma Watson Rupert Grint they were only 12 or 11 when they first started these films and now 20 years later they're looking back on where it all started so that's very exciting uh, maybe we get we'll get a little bit more of an insight into uh, the actors and their characters and what they did for it so I'm super excited for it, and I know Harry Potter fans will be as well. You know, 20 years, that's very, very exciting, and that's a huge milestone. Um, and it will be on HBO Max uh, January 1st, 2022. So it's coming up very, very soon. Yeah. 
I think there's going to be a lot of fans that are going to be excited to see what's coming out here in December and January. But yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see that cast come together, especially them growing up with those movies. It's going to be exciting for them as well. They're probably going to be really pumped to be able to see each other after, uh, you know, all this time. And I'm sure they hang out behind the scenes, but, you know, for them to actually be able to have people watch and see them come back together, I think Harry Potter fans are going to be super pumped to see that. But that's all the time we have for this week's entertainment panel, unfortunately. Thanks again so much for talking with us. Of course, thank you. Christmas is in the air and a show that people love to go to every year is back here at the Lloyd X grounds. It's the Lloydminster Christmas Craft Fair and Chamber Expo. It's on until 9 o'clock tonight, tomorrow 10 to 6 and then Sunday 10 until 4. You've got an opportunity to find really unique one of a kind items when you stop by this really fantastic show. Handmade items, local businesses, antiques and more. Plus, they've got a food court so you can enjoy some delicious food when you come out and get a start on that Christmas shopping. Speaking of Christmas, Santa is going to be here as well. So make sure you bring the whole family down. And also when you're here, make sure you enter to win the daily door prize draws as well. Admission is $7 at the door, 12 and under. Get in for free. Head to the Lloyd X grounds this weekend. The Vic Juba Community Theatre is set to come alive with great music starting this weekend. Colin James is going to take to the stage at the Vic Juba Community Theatre tomorrow night and he'll be playing his big hits like Five Long Years and also music from his brand new album Open Road that he just released earlier this month. He takes to the stage tomorrow night at 7.30. On Wednesday night at the Vic Juba Community Theatre, Chantal Kreviazek will bring her Christmas show to town and then next Friday, November 26th, at Haley Cardinal is at the Vic Juba Community Theater. For all the details and to get your tickets, go online, victjubatheater.ca. The nights are starting to get a little bit colder, so warm up with a delicious hot meal that the Royal Canadian Legion Lloyd Minster branch is going to be serving up on Saturday, December 4th. Enjoy a delicious roast beef supper. It will be available for curbside pickup or takeout. And $15 a plate? Reserve your plate now by calling the Legion at 306-825-2521. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, we hope you stay safe and stay healthy. What's Happening is brought to you by Northern Factory Workwear, Circle Drive East, Saskatoon, and Highway 17 South, Lloydminster. Today, I'm joined by Mindy Krasnowski to talk a little bit about her new book, Third Winter. So to start, could you maybe tell me a little bit about the book? So my book is actually based on, I guess you could say, real events. I uh, got the inspiration from a very blizzardy day that we encountered a couple of winters, I guess. What is it? Yeah, a couple of winters ago, I guess it is now. But uh, as every parent knows, keeping your kids locked up inside during a blizzard is never an easy task. So I kind of had a little inspiration and uh, wrote a story about third winter in Alberta, which is something I think we all can relate to. <laughs> And so could you tell me maybe a little bit about the significance of the title Third Winter? Okay, well, like I said, we are no stranger to winter in Alberta as we just seen our first winter. Um, it's basically what it is. Two little girls bored to tears trying to get through one day of snow. <laughs> um, it actually was what inspired it really was uh, it was plus 12 the day before. And we were actually outside jumping in puddles, having the best day ever. And then uh, we woke up the next day to just third winter. The spring was here and then it was just like mounds of snow everywhere. And the kids were, oh, they were so upset. They had the worst day ever, I'm sure, in their small little eyes. <laughs> yeah. With this being your first book, what was the whole experience like for you between the writing and the publishing of the book? It was actually really good. I uh, I wrote the story and I sent it off to a couple uh, publishers, a couple in the UK actually, one in the States and one in Canada. I actually had two that were interested, but it came down to uh, the contract and what suited my needs or 
you know, so forth. And so then uh, it was actually really good. The, I went through Olympia and they also have uh, Bumblebee under them, which is the child literacy part of their publishing company. So it's actually Bumblebee who did the imprint and uh, it's great. They, we did everything online. We did Zoom meetings. They were always on time with uh, their their schedule. I never had to wait around to hear from them. It was a really great, actually, a really fun experience to say the least. And so what was it that initially got you into writing? Uh, the first book, it, it was a long time coming. I've actually, I wrote a lot in my younger years and then I kind of strayed away from it. You know, life happens, you just do different jobs, experience different things. And now I'm a stay at home mom and I got three little ones at home. So, uh, not doing too much here in Clan Donald. And like I said, I felt inspired that day and finally picked up a pen after many, many years and put it down to paper and made something out of it. I'm actually, uh, I think I'll keep going. I wrote my second story. It's in its editing process right now. So I think it'll be a, a, a good future ahead in writing. <laughs> and where would people be able to buy your book? Okay, well, as it stands right now, I don't actually think it's on shelves here in Canada. It can take about eight weeks for distribution to get to all the stores, but stores that it is available online is Barnes & Noble, Chapters Indigo. Uh, simply, if you Google the book's title, and M. Krasnowski, which is my pen name, uh, the, it'll give you a list of places where you can get it. But like I said, Barnes and Noble chapters in to go. Um, we're working into the Alberta Public Library Association to get it out to the Albertas here, or the not the Albertas, the bookstores. <laughs> um, so yeah, for right now online, it, the ebook is coming available for those uh, Kindle app people. Um, it takes about four weeks after the paper book is printed to get it on ebook as well. <laughs> And so how long was the whole writing process for you between initially writing the book and then going through publishing? Well, the story itself was writ wrote pretty fast. Uh, it was a two-year process from the time I've submitted it to actually having it published. But what I meant by a long time coming is I was always... I, was, I wrote a lot as a child and even in my younger adult years, I just never really saw it as something that I would pursue. And I don't know why I never did it sooner. Like I know I have a talent. I, I can make people laugh. I can make people cry. I can, you know, I'm a great writer. So I, I, that's what I meant by that. I just, I don't know why I never done it sooner. Thank you for taking the time to meet with me and congratulations on your book. Thank you for joining us and have a great night.